um, welcome to the evening session of Bomber today and good morning to everybody connecting from Europe. So it is a great pleasure to introduce Didier Henyon from University of Toulouse. So he will be talking about polynomial optimization with Lasse hierarchy. So Didier, the floor is yours. Um, many thanks uh, to the organizers, especially to Vera for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk at this uh, workshop. So I was requested explicitly by the organizers to be uh, tutorial, introductory. So that's not really a research talk. That's much more an introductory talk to the topic of polynomial optimization. And it's a two part uh, talk. So there will be today a broad introduction to the topic, mostly using a PDF slides, a little bit of handwriting. And uh, tomorrow, there will be uh, much more practical uh, matters and uh, computations on MATLAB. So we'll be sharing my MATLAB screens and uh, we'll run through uh, several demos. So um, for those of you uh, who will uh, just uh, catch up with the, the second talk of tomorrow, I will still uh, make some introdu introduction tomorrow uh, so that we are at the same page. I will not assume everybody uh, sees the first talk to uh, be able to follow the second. So uh, let me now uh, share my uh, uh, PDF uh, slides. So I, I will post the slides on the on the Slack um, environment uh, later on. And um, here they are. Um, So uh, hopefully you can see them. Yes, so it's, yeah, okay, thank you. Yes, so in terms of questions, uh, feel free to interrupt me uh, anytime. I don't mind uh, being interrupted. Uh, you can also post uh, questions in written form uh, to the chat. And um, um, then uh, I can attend the question uh, when, there is a, when there is a little break. So I'll be speaking about uh, polynomial optimization with the Lasser hierarchy, and I'll uh, try to um, stay really elementary uh, while still uh, presenting uh, everything, uh, not hiding anything. Well, I will be relying on some uh, deep theorem of uh, real algebraic geometry that we will not prove. But uh, the rest will be hopefully um, all uh, clear um, and explicit. So um, the outline of the talk is the is the following. So I'll be um, I'll be uh, first introducing the, the topic of polynomial optimization, and then I will uh, reformulate this non-convex nonlinear problem as a linear problem, a linear conic problem. And uh, in order to be able to uh, address uh, numerically constructively this linear formulation, I will uh, have to go through uh, cones of uh, positive polynomials and moments and cones of uh, polynomial sum of squares and moment relaxations. So this will be the third part. And this will be the core, the, the core technical ingredients to uh, construct the so-called lasser or moment sum of squares uh, hierarchy. So presenting the, um, the hierarchy and um, the mathematical uh, components of it is the main purpose of this uh, first lecture. And tomorrow we'll see how it works uh, in practice on the, on the computer. At the end of the lecture of today, I will um, uh, mention a few extensions and pointers uh, for those of you uh, who want to know a little bit more. So what is polynomial optimization for me? Um, Suppose that we are given a certain number of uh, polynomials with real coefficients of uh, vector indeterminate. So they are multivariate polynomials of, of, of x, um, n variables. Um, I would like to minimize um, the first polynomial p uh, on the set capital X, which is given as the intersection of finitely many polynomial super level sets. So this uh, set capital X, I assume to be bounded so that um, um, the 
minimum here exists since p is continuous, x is bounded in Rn. Uh, I denote the value of the minimum uh, p star. And um, well, a little bit of terminology, this, this set, which is intersection of uh, finitely many polynomial uh, zero super level sets, it's called basic semi-algebraic, uh, basic because there is only conjunctions of inequalities. There are no unions, only intersections. And semi-algebraic refer to the fact that we have inequalities and uh, involving polynomials. This includes, of course, as particular cases, equations. And uh, then the set becomes algebraic. And in uh, full generality, presented like that, uh, I believe that nobody will uh, um, uh, argue that this problem is uh, very difficult uh, by all possible ways of measuring difficulty. Uh, let's say that it's uh, potentially very challenging, even for moderate dimensions, and it could be very difficult to solve the problem globally. So it's nonlinear, non-convex, so the objective function P can be non-convex. The set capital X can be non-convex, maybe uh, not even connected. It can be a discrete set, maybe union of points if you have equations, and here you have an algebraic variety. And of course, uh, there could be several global optimizers, so an, an optimizer or minimizer, um, refers to a value of x for which p of x is equal to p star. And there could be even uh, infinitely many optimizers. They can lie on a algebraic variety. They could be uh, uh, as many as we want, infinitely many. Uh, I will return to an example tomorrow um, where we have infinitely minimizers and we'll see what we can do with that. So that's polynomial optimization problem, uh, arguably a difficult, challenging problem. So there are several ways to uh, tackle this problem. And uh, the way we uh, will follow um, uh, today is um, through a detour um, to a reformulation, an equivalent reformulation of the problem, which is uh, purely linear. So he, here it uh, goes. So instead of the original non-convex nonlinear pop, uh, which is a problem over uh, vectors in Rn in this set capital X, we consider we consider this problem which is linear, but now instead of uh, minimizing over uh, small x, we minimize over mu, where mu is a probability measure. We minimize the integral of p against the probability measure. So this mu. Um, is a probability measure supported on capital X. Uh, probability measure, you can view it as a, a linear functional and continuous function. So that's the, let's say, one way to think about measures, which is uh, continuous or bounded and which is normalized. So um, the first thing I would like to know. Um, detail a little bit is the fact that the values of these two problems that are the same. So P star and P star M, M for measure, um, they, um, they match. And this linear problem, um, as for optimal solution, any uh, measure which is concentrated at uh, an optimal solution of the original problem. So any direct measure at any optimal solution of the original problem uh, um, is a solution of the linear problem. Okay, so now, um, now I will take some time to uh, give first some intuition behind this uh, linear reformulation, and then we just prove uh, formally, it will be quick, uh, just a few uh, uh, lines, uh, prove formally that the, the two values are the same. Okay, the, the benefit, uh, before I go uh, through that, the benefit, of course, is that instead of having here a non-linear, non-convex problem, here I have a purely linear problem as soon as I am able to deal with uh, probability measures on X. And the rest of the lecture will be precisely how to deal with, uh, computationally, with probability measures on X, on X with capital X. So let me go through um, some uh, handwriting now. To explain, um, to explain this, um, 
I use uh, the lifted camera, which is in front of me. And so um, I hope everybody can see what I'm writing. So uh, the original, it's not focus, is it? Sorry, a little bit of tuning. So the original pop is uh, like that. And um, so the intuition behind the reformulation using, using measures, so the uh, reformulation using measures is uh, like that. The intuition is the following. So uh, suppose you look at the graph of the polynomial on the set uh, X. So, so suppose this is a set X. So this is Rn. The polynomial will look like that. That's P as a function of X. So the, the intuition behind this reformulation is that uh, in X, we uh, use, uh, we choose some samples, some values of X, as many as we want, and we try to evaluate the polynomial at these points. So we get the values. And we compare the evaluation, the point evaluations. Of course, the, the objective is to minimize the value of p. So uh, we so this value is better, is, is smaller than than these two, and so we can reformulate that as a, an optimization problem if the samples are given. Uh, so given the samples x k in capital X, uh, we may want to find the weights that I will denote WK, summing up to one, such that this quantity, the weighted evaluations of the polynomial at XK is minimized. So, uh, Given the sample, we want to find the weights here, so that this uh, linear combination of the point evaluation is as small as possible. And of course, uh, the intuition tells us that we should put, uh, if there is a single global minimizer here, we should put all the weight here, so that here uh, W3 will be 1, and W2 will be 0, W1 will be 0. So this is the intuition behind this integral formulation, which somehow is the way to write this sum, this weighted sum. But in a mathematically uh, rigorous way as a, a weighted combination, but where the number of samples here can be infinite, can be uncountable. Um, the constraint that mu is a priority measure uh, means that the weights should be non-negative and that they, they should sum up to one. So that's the intuition behind this uh, linear reformulation. Uh, you see also that here, uh, I assume that the samples are given so that um, here, what uh, the unknowns are the weights and I am linear in the weights. That's exactly what the uh, probability measure does here. So that's the intuition behind the, this uh, measure reformulation. No, when it comes to proving that uh, that p um, p star is p star m, uh, so p star is the value of the polynomial optimization problem, and p star m is the value of the linear problem on the priority measures. Uh, it's as simple as uh, follows. So uh, we just uh, uh, use definition of a global uh, minimum p star. Um, to claim that p, p of x is bigger than p star for all x in capital X. And since here, um, um, 
I have this inequality, I can multiply by, I can integrate this on both sides by the positive uh, um, non-negative uh, probability measure without changing the sign. So I take any probability measure and I do this integration. for all probability measure. Um, let me call it like that, for all proba mu on capital X. But since mu is a probability measure, its integral over X is one. And here I have a constant. So this is equal to P star. And here you see that for every possible probability measure, this quantity is bigger than P star in the problem in the linear problem on measures, I minimize over all possible priority measure so that uh, when I minimize this uh, guy, I get um, PM star, and hence PM star is bigger than uh, P star. That's uh, one uh, side of the equation. And to prove the other side, we just uh, pick up a particular priority measure which is the Dirac measure at any global minimizer of the original problem. So at any x star in x, such that p of x star is equal to p star. So that's the definition of a global minimizer. And hence, if I just evaluate the objective function of my linear problem on measures, at this particular choice of a probability measure supported on capital X, I get, uh, by definition, P star. But since in the linear problem on probability measures, I minimize over not, over not only Dirac measures, but over all possible probability measures, I can get something in general, which is smaller or maybe equal to this value. So this proves the other side. And actually, um, we know that uh, it's equal. So that uh, choice of uh, probability measure that does that solve the linear problem measure is precisely this direct measure at any global minimizer. And you may also have uh, guessed that if there are several global minimizers, any convex combination of uh, direct measure supported on all these global, minimizer, global minimizers will be also solutions. And this can also be true for uh, any uh, uncountable uh, convex combination. If there are infinitely many, uncountably many global minimizers, um, uh, and uh, let's say that uh, uh, probability measures supported on the set of global minimizers will be uh, a solution to the problem um, to the linear reformulation of my uh, polynomial optimization problem. Questions so far on this linear reformulation? It's clear enough? Um, okay. So um, now I'll get back to uh, my, uh, my slides. Okay, so um, I hope I could convince you that uh, here um, um, solving this problem, this nonlinear, non convex problem, is the same as solving this linear problem. And of course, uh, the challenge will be uh, to design a numerical method uh, to solve uh, this problem on priority measures. Um, so first, um, we can use duality, Lagrange duality. So I will not uh, detail uh, that, uh, um, but you have to trust me. Um, if you uh, construct the Lagrange dual of the linear problem on priority measure, so that's an infinite dimensional linear problem, then what you get is a problem which is the following. 
uh, it's uh, also a linear problem. There is a single uh, optimization variable, a single unknown, corresponding to the constraint, to the, the constraint that uh, mu is a priority measure. And it, it, so this, this, this value here, uh, this variable should be such that the polynomial P of X is bigger than the value on the set capital X. So um, since P is a polynomial, uh, this can be rephrased as the constraint that this uh, shifted polynomial here belongs to the cone, a convex cone, a finite dimensional convex cone of polynomials of degree not bigger than uh, small d that are non-negative on capital X. So the intuition behind this um, dual problem is even uh, simpler that uh, simpler than the intuition behind the primal uh, measure uh, problem in the sense that um, it's a definition of a, of a global minimum actually it's the largest possible lower bound uh, on the graph of the polynomial on the set of interest so the, the largest possible uh, lower bound is by definition uh, the global minimum okay so that in the dual we have um, a cone here, which is uh, finite dimensional, uh, convex, the cone of positive polynomials. So what can we do with this dual reformulation, especially what can we do with this, uh, with this object here? Um, is it easy to uh, deal with? So um, before uh, dealing with the uh, cone itself, I will uh, look at its um, dual. And for that, I will, I will have to introduce some notations. So I speak of polynomials, uh, P of X, and polynomials can be expressed um, in any basis. Since the, we are uh, restricting our attention to polynomials of finitely many variables and finite degree, uh, the basis that I needed B here uh, will be just a basis of uh, finite dimensional vector space. So its dimension is this uh, binomial coefficient. And I will index elements in this basic, in this basis, uh, in, uh, yes, in this set of indices here, a vector of integers summing up to, uh, uh, up to B. And so I can express any polynomial in this basis as the linear combination where the PA here are real numbers. Uh, it's just expression of the polynomial in the basis. You can think of a monomial basis, for example, and this is what we'll be doing uh, uh, tomorrow uh, computationally, just because it's easy to write, maybe not numerically the best choice, but uh, at least this is uh, easy to write. Yeah. If you uh, are doing numerics, you may want other bases, maybe Le Genre polynomial, uh, Hermite polynomial, or Chebyshev polynomial. There are plenty of choices. The objective function in my linear problem on uh, measures uh, then just writes as a linear combination. Uh, if I just uh, replace here P of X by its expression, I have a weighted combination uh, of uh, numbers here, uh, y uh, indexed uh, a, which are moments. That's the definition of a moment of a measure mu. Okay, if you just uh, write here, if you expand p in the basis, you see that this becomes a weighted combination of these integrals. And uh, these are defined as moments of a measure. So if you have just uh, monomials, uh, powers of x, uh, well, actually, uh, multi-index uh, monomial, so there will be products of uh, integer powers of the entries of x, you have uh, multivariate algebraic moments of the measure. Okay, so we can write the objective function in the problem on measures uh, as a linear function of the moments, so that the uh, linear problem on probability measures that we started with can be uh, reformulated as a linear problem on moments of these measures. And here you see this constraint here just uh, models the fact that um, uh, mu is a probability measure. So it's integral against the function, which is one, 
um, is equal to one. And uh, okay, if I just have uh, this, uh, this is certainly not enough for uh, y to correspond to moments of some measure. So I have this additional constraint here that uh, uh, enforces y, uh, the vector y, to have uh, its entries ya uh, equal to moments of some priority measure uh, supported on capital X. So this. This is written as a conic constraint. And there is a theorem, which is uh, called the ries haviland theorem, which uh, tells us that this cone, this is the so-called uh, cone of moments, is actually the uh, topological dual to the cone of positive polynomials. So it's the, the set of all um, uh, linear functionals, uh, y, on the cone of positive polynomials uh, which are non-negative. So that this problem of moments, actually, uh, it's a finite dimensional uh, convex problem, and it's dual to this other finite dimensional convex problem, uh, the, 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 the dual problem uh, on uh, positive polynomials that we just had before. So these two problems here, uh, this one and this one, uh, uh, they are in uh, duality and they are uh, finite dimensional convex. Okay, I should uh, mention also the fact that uh, I can safely replace here uh, measure by its moments since the uh, set over which the measure is supported is uh, compact, so that there is a bijection between uh, the set of moments, um, the countable set of moments and uh, the set of uh, measures on capital X. I already mentioned that this constraint here uh, corresponds to the normalization, the fact that uh, the measure is a probability measure. And uh, yeah, and this is the duality theorem on which uh, I rely to uh, put these two problems in uh, duality. Okay, so I started, uh, let me recap, uh, I started from the finite dimensional non-linear non-convex polynomial optimization problem. I reformulated it as a linear problem on the one hand, uh, on measures on the other hand on positive polynomials. And now by letting uh, measures act on um, elements of the basis to represent my polynomials, I reformulate that as a linear problem on finitely many moments dual to a linear problem on positive polynomials. So I have uh, now um, finite dimensional convex uh, uh, conic linear optimization. Uh, questions so far? It's okay. So you can have a question. Um, so you mentioned that uh, we can choose actually different bases, not necessarily monomials. So, yes. but uh, which I guess monomials is probably the most unstable, uh, or it's not true. So, what's your well, relation here? Well, yeah, uh, I mean, numerically speaking, the the, uh, mon the monomials are not behaving well. Uh, uh, in the sense that uh, if you look at uh, already in, in one variable, uh, the function uh, x to the d, so let's say x is a scalar, d is an integer, and if you look at this function uh, for d large, say d uh, an even large number, uh, basically between minus one and one, uh, this function is almost zero. Mm -hmm. And outside of minus one and one, uh, it is almost infinity. And at minus one and uh, one, it is equal to plus one. So uh, as soon as the degree D is large, um, uh, this function does not bring much information. Uh, so, and all the monomials X to the D um, uh, look the same for D uh, large enough. Okay, so you may want to use other uh, functions than uh, monomials to represent uh, high degree polynomials. Uh, and for example, uh, for example, highly oscillatory uh, polynomials could be preferable, maybe Chebyshev polynomials. 
However, uh, for uh, what we'll see later on, this Lasser hierarchy, the size of the problems will be already uh, such that uh, the benefit of using alternative polynomial bases uh, will become, then the monomial bases will become not so apparent. So that, okay. that would be for larger problems or problems with sparsity and additional constraints. This, mm -hmm. is, uh, this is why we we'll stick with monomials. Um, at least to write things down, to explain the theory, this is preferable. This is simpler, at least to our experiments, yes. Didier, uh, Russell, Luke, and uh, Göttingen, I have a, a really basic question that, that more, more reveals my, my inexperience with this. Uh, so I'm looking for conservation of difficulty. You took a non-convex problem, you, you reformulated it as a linear problem mm -hmm. in an infinite dimensional measure space. Okay, conservation of difficulty there. But then all of a sudden, when you, when you go to your, to your later formulations, you've got a, a finite dimensional problem yeah. of accountables. Yeah. Uh, it seems like all of a sudden, you, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't see the difficulty preservation here going from your infinite dimensional problem on the top yes. there. Yeah. Thank, thanks for can asking. You, can you give me some intuition for that? Yes, the, 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 the next uh, section of the talk will be pr precisely on the difficulty of dealing with these uh, finite dimensional convex cores. So um, maybe there is a mis misunderstanding that uh, finite dimensionality and convexity means, uh, means uh, computationally easy. <laughs> and that's not the case, actually. There are very few convex finite dimensional cones for which we can really uh, optimize efficiently. Uh, <laughs> so we don't know, uh, of, of course, uh, everything uh, about it. But uh, basically, the semi-definite cone is probably the, 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 the most general uh, finite dimensional convex cone over which we can really uh, optimize efficiently. All the other finite dimensional um, convex cones are, are much more difficult. And so these are, these are uh, two of them. And I, I, will, okay. I will tell more about them now. Yeah. So there is a difficulty Thanks. here. Yeah. yeah. Good. So I hope this answers partly the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. OK, so let, let me get to these cones. So OK. Uh, so convex finite dimensional does not mean easy at all. Okay, uh, these are challenging. These are just if you give me a vector p, a vector of coefficients of a polynomial, or a vector of moments of a measure, and just to know whether indeed this corresponds to a positive polynomial or to a positive measure, this is very hard. This is very hard. Well, I will not embark into discussions on computational complexity. But um, uh, just testing a membership oracle in this code uh, is really a challenge. And not much is known, actually, about the geometry of these codes, whereas much more is known about the geometry of the semi-definite code I will be talking about later on. For example, if you want to optimize over them, yeah, we don't have efficient barrier functions. and. Uh, Actually, they are, they, are, they, are, they are challenging um, on their own. Yeah, questions? Yeah, is there a precise statement about what you mean by difficult, like in terms of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lead and things like this? Yeah, yeah. well, Lisa will not, uh, yeah, well, the classification in complexity theory is not always uh, related to difficulty. So there are many, in the same class, in the same complexity class, there are problems that are extremely hard and that are very easy to solve in practice on the computer. So I will not embark into this difficulty yeah, uh, question and complexity classes. Uh, this will bring us a little bit too far. Um, let's say that right now, if I give you, um, if I give you, um, let's say, uh, coefficients of a polynomial of uh, two variables and degree six, so that this cone here is of dimension 28. Uh, knowing whether it's a positive polynomial or not uh, is difficult. It's difficult, and uh, uh, well, there may be computer algebra algorithms that uh, answers the question, but uh, it will take some time for them to run. And uh, actually, that's not what we'll, what we'll be doing. We'll be actually using uh, approximations of these codes with the hope that the approximations are, are good enough. So um, 
these approximations are based on, um, on the ideas uh, of representing polynomials as sum of squares of other polynomials. So, um, uh, well, another terminology which is vague uh, at purpose is intractable, or challenging, computationally difficult uh, for this cone. And so we'll try to approximate with uh, this cone with another cone, which is much more tractable. And this other cone will be the semi-definite cone. So here is how it works. So first, I just uh, use this notational device. P0 is the, is the one function. And since uh, capital X here, the, the set over which optimize is bounded, uh, I assume that one of the polynomials defining the set capital X, maybe the first one, P1, is the equation of a ball that includes capital X. So this will be uh, the case if the radius capital R is chosen large enough. Okay, this, this is important for the uh, later on for the approximation properties, the asymptotic guarantees of approximations. And right now, let's suppose this is uh, ensured. Then I define this uh, cone here, uh, sigma x of r for r, uh, an integer uh, which will be a degree, which is bigger than d, the degree of the polynomial p I have in the objective function. And this cone, however, uh, belongs to the vector space uh, where p uh, lives. So it's the it belongs to a vector space of polynomials of n variables of degree up to d. But it's written as a weighted combination of the polynomials pk here, which have fixed degree, uh, degree pk, with the weight here, sk, being polynomial sum of squares of degree, which is each of sk is of degree r minus degree of pk. So that here, when I multiply by pk, each term here, x sk pk as a polynomial as degree r. And so I represent p, a degree d polynomial, as a sum of finitely many polynomials of degree r bigger than d. And uh, what happens is that they may be cancellations of higher order terms, so that by doing the sum here, eventually, I restore a degree d polynomial. Okay, so uh, the sk here, the the weights in my uh, in the way I represent p. So everything here is is, uh, is polynomial. So it's p of x, sk of x, pk of x. The 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 sk they belong to the cone of polynomial sum of squares. Um, so these are polynomials that can be written uh, by just definition as sum of squares of other polynomials. I will tell more about this cone in the next slide. But before we go there, just let me uh, convince you that this uh, lemma is correct. So first, um, these cones here are uh, included into each other when R increases. Since I consider polynomials of degree up to uh, R, uh, then if R increases, uh, I get what I had before, but I may even have a more. So there are this inclusion, this first inclusion here. Uh, and the second inclusion here is uh, also by construction, because if you look at the point X, small x, such that PK of small x is bigger than zero, then if you evaluate this polynomial at small x, you have a non-negative number. If you evaluate sk at x, you have also a non-negative number because it's a sum of square. And hence, the product sk pk evaluated at small x in capital X is a non-negative number. And I'm summing non-negative numbers so that p of x is non-negative and hence belongs to the cone of non-negative polynomials on capital X. So this proves this inclusion. So you see that by increasing the degree r here, you have a family of inner approximation of increasing quality of the cone of uh, positive polynomials. 
And of course, now there are two questions which arise. Uh, the first one is, uh, can we really uh, optimize uh, linear functions over these cones, this cone of some weighted sum of squares? And the second question is, uh, what is the quality uh, guarantees of the inclusion when R grows? especially when R tends to infinity, do we retrieve the whole cone of positive polynomials? And this is what I will uh, deal with next, these two questions. So about the first question, um, I will return to that tomorrow uh, with a, um, a pencil and uh, paper proof. Uh, it turns out that uh, deciding whether a polynomial is a sum of squares uh, boils down to semi-definite programming. So linear, programming in the cone of non-negative quadratic forms. And for that, we have um, barrier functions, which can be efficiently manipulated. And we have primal dual interval point methods, which are uh, efficient uh, to solve problems uh, of that class. So that, um, uh, well, these are actually uh, se linear sections of the semi-definite cone, they are so-called spectrohedra. They are convex uh, objects, and somehow they encode also the combinatorics uh, like poly polytope, but otherwise they are curved outwards, they are inflated. And uh, very much is known about these uh, spectrohedra, these uh, sections of the semi-definite cone and the optimi optimization over, over them. So that the answer to the first question is uh, affirmative. Uh, the approximation from inside of the cone of positive polynomial uses a semi-definite cone, so it is um, tractable. As to the second question and the asymptotics when the degree grows to uh, infinity, well, this is a very old story that dates back to uh, Hilbert uh, in the 19th century. And Hilbert actually knew already that uh, actually there is a match between the cone of sum of squares in n variables um, and degree 2D and the cone of positive polynomials, but only in three cases. When the number of variables is one, so univariate polynomials, they are necessarily sum of squares when they are non-negative, or quadratics, so these ones, so we have degree two uh, polynomials, quadratic uh, polynomials, they are necessarily sum of squares if they are non-negative, or the third case uh, is uh, bivariate polynomials of degree four. Bivariate quartics, if they are positive, they are necessarily sum of squares. And in all the other cases, there are polynomials that are positive, but that are not sum of squares. And the first explicit example came much later. It's a polynomial due to Motskin, which is a bivariate polynomial of degree six. So it belongs to this uh, cone of dimension 28, cone of positive polynomials. This can be shown easily. Uh, however, it cannot be written as a sum of squares of other polynomials. So that's a uh, counterexample uh, to the, well, an illustration, uh, an example to the fact that this cone, the cone of sum of squares is smaller than the cone of positive polynomials, is strictly inside. And actually, uh, there is also the story of uh, Hilbert's address at the ICM uh, in Paris. Uh, that's a picture of Paris during the uh, international exhibition in uh, 1900. Uh, Hilbert's 17th problem was precisely uh, about uh, the question of whether positive polynomials can be written as sum of squares of rational functions, or more generally, if non-negative rational functions can be written as a sum of squares of non-negative rational functions, okay? Because it was known to Hilbert already before that it's not the case for polynomials. There are polynomials that are positive, but are, which are not sum of squares. Okay, so that's an old story. And um, as far as the, uh, since we are at uh, solving problems of more than two variables and degree bigger than two, uh, will be faced with this, uh, uh, the fact that positive polynomials um, is a bigger cone than the cone of sum of squares. Um, so we have a strict inclusion here uh, of sigma into P. And I, 
using convex duality, we can actually, since this is a cone of moments, we can have uh, the reverse inclusions so that in the moment dual space, we have outer approximations of the cone. And since we have outer approximation, these elements here, uh, I will uh, tomorrow show you how they look like explicitly. Um, these are called uh, linear matrix inequality relaxations. Um, so these elements are sometimes called pseudo expectations or pseudo moments, since they are not necessarily moments. They are, you may have uh, uh, vectors here in, in these codes which are not moments of measures. And that's why we say that the, uh, this guy here is a relaxation of this guy in the moment space. Whereas in the positive polynomial space, this is the other way. This is a reinforcement or straightening, an inner approximation. So that's the idea behind the Lasser hierarchy. Instead of uh, dealing with this uh, finite dimensional convex linear problem, which are intractable in the code of moments and positive polynomial, we uh, solve the problem in these uh, outer, respectively inner approximations, which are semi-definite problems. And so instead of having a single problem, we have a family or hierarchy of semi-definite problems. You see the, 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 well, there is actually duality here, but also here, it's not hard to prove. And we have uh, not a single semi-definite problem, but the whole family of semi-definite problems corresponding to this original intractable problem for increasing values of the so-called relaxation um, order. So in, uh, integer R is called the relaxation order. We have this inclusion, and the second question I, uh, I asked is whether the inclusion is tight when R grows. And indeed, it's a result by Mihai Putina from a real algebraic geometry, the proof of which is really rather complicated with his operator theory, that up to taking the closure, uh, when R tends to infinity, we retrieve all positive polynomials. And this was used by Jean-Bernard Lasser, my close colleague here in Toulouse in 2001, to prove actually that the sequence of values of the semi-definite problem you have, uh, this I denoted P star R, they are monotonically non-decreasing and converging asymptotically to the value. Uh, so this uh, family of problem in the previous slide, um, um, the, they are, uh, this is called the moment sum of squares hierarchy for polynomial optimization, also called the Lasser hierarchy. Um, and this is what we'll be constructing tomorrow on the computer. Um, almost done. Um, should mention result by Jiawang Ni, um, who proved that uh, generically uh, there is finite convergence of the hierarchy. So the result by, by Jean Bernard uh, said that we have asymptotic convergence, but actually more is true because we observed on many examples that uh, actually small values of R were such that P star R is equal to P star. And actually it's true generically. Generically uh, should be understood in the, in the following sense. So if you give me a pop polynomial optimization problem, I will perturb it a little bit and in my perturb problem, I will have finite convergence. So even though if you cooked up your pop uh, in such a way that uh, we don't have finite convergence and such problems exist, a vanishingly small perturbation uh, of your pop uh, will result in a problem for which we have finite convergence. Uh, of course, uh, not much is known about the value of R for which this will be uh, true. So if you give me a pop um, and if you allow me to perturb it, I will not be able to predict what is the value of R for which I will have uh, the value of the relaxed uh, problem equal to the value of the original problem. However, uh, we have sufficient conditions uh, to check uh, whether this is the case for a finite value of R. So I solve my uh, semi-definite problem, the primal on moments or pseudo moments and the dual sum of, sum of squares. These are semi-definite programs. I solve them on my computer 
and I can use numerically uh, numerical linear algebra. Uh, I will I will uh, talk about that tomorrow um, to check ranks of moment matrices, and uh, this will be uh, this will allow me to certify global optimality, namely that this uh, equality holds uh, to numerical precision. And moreover, I will be able to extract the minimizers, so the point x star in capital X, such that p of x star is equal to p star. And tomorrow, we'll also, I will also tell you uh, what can be done uh, if uh, there are infinitely many such points. Uh, so this is another technique that we have to ensure that there is uh, uh, convergence of the hierarchy. Uh, this is more recent, um, and this is called the Christoffel Darbou uh, polynomial. You will see that we can construct from the moments a polynomial, which is a sum of squares, and it's a small uh, sub-level sets will actually uh, concentrate up on the support of the optimal measure mu solving the linear problem of measures. We'll see that tomorrow. OK, I'm almost uh, done. Just uh, a finite slide to mention extensions of this. So um, well, the, the hierarchy, the moment sum of squares hierarchy was uh, uh, conceived at the early 2000s. Uh, and then there have been many, many uh, extensions of this. And Personally, I've been interested in uh, extensions to dynamics, so dynamical systems, iterations, discrete time systems, polynomial iterations, um, the computation of region of attractions, uh, the computation of maximal positively invariant sets, the approximate solution of optimal control problems on, uh, with polynomial ordinary differential equations subject to uh, semi-algebraic constraints, more recently, we have been studying uh, non some uh, nonlinear partial differential equations using the moment sum of squares hierarchy. And they are, st are still working on extensions to stochastic differential equations. And if you're interested in, this, in these topics, um, I welcome you to have a look at the website of uh, European Network, which is which started last year. It's called POEMA, Polynomial Optimization Efficiency Through Moments and Algebra. And it's a network which funds a certain number of uh, PhD uh, fellowships uh, all across Europe. And uh, there are workshops and uh, talks recorded. And uh, you can find plenty of uh, information on polynomial optimization there. And if you're interested in uh, what I just presented and uh, its extensions to uh, dynamics, uh, you can have a look uh, at uh, the lectures I gave uh, a few months ago within these uh, European networks. They have been recorded and they are complemented with um, sketchy lecture notes and also exercises with written solutions. So if you want to know more, uh, here is a starting point. Okay, thank you for your attention. I'm ready to take uh, questions. Uh, can, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, ah, so it, it is a bit of a vague question. So regarding the, the, the first half of the mm -hmm. talk and the motivation to, uh, to yes. get to, to the semi-definite uh, mm -hmm. programming formulation, I'm just mm -hmm. curious to know to which extent, from an optimization point of view, extensions of this uh, were considered. So, for example, I guess that idea of the trick with the, the, the measure in the beginning, that mm -hmm. the initial trick when you get PM equal to P star, that doesn't, yes. this did not use, yeah, yeah, I guess this, this, this did not use anything. Uh, Special, I guess, perhaps measurability or something like that. But ah, uh, well, no, 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 no. It does not indeed uh, rely on the fact that p is a polynomial and yeah. uh, capital P is a semi-algebraic set. This will be uh, this will be true for continuous functions p and uh, compact sets x and maybe even less. Um, no, no, indeed, no, no. The fact that we also... have data comes after computationally. 
And also, for example, uh, if you, for example, if you consider some family of functions and you consider the linear, uh, say like the, the finite dimension is point, it seems that many of these ideas, many of, at least the initial part, you could do these very similar things. So for example, one thing I, I, I have specific, specifically in mind is to consider say like exponential polynomials. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes. Yeah, certainly you can do uh, many things. Uh, uh, well, uh, eventually, if you want to use some of squares, then you should uh, you should be in an algebra, uh, at least. And uh, well, I would say that you, you can do many, many things. But first, you should be sure that the values here, this value and this value are the same. And for that, you must have some regularity. And this, if you replace uh, uh, here, the x by a probability measure on uh, capital X, uh, it may happen that you relax too much. Uh -huh. uh, so you should be careful about that. Uh, and once this is this is a so-called relaxation gap, and once this is done, and then of course, you, if you want to do computations, you should uh, make some assumptions about capital X and P. Uh, so, uh, yeah. But indeed, there, there are many uh, possible extensions uh, uh, beyond polynomials, that's, that's correct. And also let me mention that this idea of replacing a nonlinear problem, nonlinear optimization problem as a linear problem on measures is pretty old. Uh, for example, if you know the work of uh, Kantorovich on the optimal transport problem, this is exactly it. This is exactly it. Instead of solving the Monge problem uh, of uh, optimal transportation of masses, which is very difficult and nonlinear, if you write the variational characterization of it, you have the Monge Ampere equation, which is a challenging nonlinear PDE. Uh, Kantorovich proposed to write it as a linear problem on priority measures. And that was the inception of linear programming, actually, in the 40s. So this idea is. Uh, is, is uh, as many extensions to calculus of variations, optimal control. And so indeed you can do, uh, you can achieve many, many ex extensions. Yes, yeah. I see, thank you. But from an optimization point of view, the one that in a sense worked out the best was for polynomials, I guess. That's the most rigid uh, structure for which we can do uh, the most computationally. But uh, this was 20 years ago, no, indeed. Uh, uh, there are many possible extensions. As I said, uh, uh, ordinary differential equations, uh, uh, partial differential equations, stochastic differential equations. We can even think of X being, capital X being an infinite dimensional uh, vector space and having measures supported on infinite dimensional vector spaces. All of that is ongoing work indeed. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other questions? You can just unmute yourself and ask. If there is any other, no other question, I think I want to ask another question. Sure. But first, is there is someone else? Does someone else want to ask a question? Okay, then I guess I'll ask another question. Sorry. So the part where you talk about uh, perturbing the the. Oh, yeah. So, so okay. So you, if you perturb, you might get finite convergence. But it, uh, can't you get that also a different? I, I guess because I, I've seen some works, but more on the SDP side, that you you might when you, especially in degenerate condi in degenerate uh, situations where you 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 don't have necessarily continuity with respect to this kind of thing. So. Uh, continuity respect to what? To the, the yeah, to perturbation uh, oh. uh, with respect to the, the, the data. So you, you uh, can. So uh, I, you perhaps the you value, the value of the value p star is not necessarily continuous as a function of the data. That that's 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 true. Yeah. But that's not what the result is about. The result is about finite convergence. So if you of course if you give me a pop and I perturb it the value p star will be affected. Um, but this, the fact that you have finite convergence refers to the 
to the um, to the perturbed version. So uh, there will be finite convergence of the hierarchy to P star, the value of the perturbed part. So maybe this is confusing in the sense that you may have uh, expected P star to be equal to the value of the original part, the unperturbed one. But no, it's not what the result says. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, I, I, I mean, I understand that it would be different, but my concern is whether this difference could be too large. To, to uh, yeah, it's so for example, it's more perturbation, it's more perturbation, but yeah. large difference. I guess, uh, yeah, I can, I, yeah, I can, uh, I think it can be uh, quite large. I don't, I don't know what, what is known about the regularity of the value of uh, pop. Uh, this I don't know. I'm not an expert. Uh, I guess it should be lower semi-continuous, but I don't know if there are estimates on the size of the jumps and uh, uh, as a function of the size of the perturbations. And also it depends on the, on the way you perturb, the, which basis you are and so on. I, I don't know much about that. Okay. Uh, th mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So if there is any other question, I would like to ask you to post it on Slack so we can move on to the next speaker. Thank you very much, Didier. It was a nice talk. So let's thank this.